Okay, we're on step 86, and this step calls for us to remove CR5, which is this ring from the cardboard ring set. You might as well go ahead and remove the other ones as well, and then everything off of this plywood sheet, because in the steps 86 through 105, we're gonna use all these parts. The important thing is, uh, once you start removing these rings, you're gonna take the uh, engine mount tube for the upper stage, and mine is a little bit tight, so you wanna make sure you sand these so that they uh, slide on easily. So go ahead and do that at this point. You might as well do all of them. It just saves you some time. Okay, we're in step 87, which is uh, we're gonna take the weld nut. I mean, we're gonna take CR5 and there's two holes on it. The one that's closest to the inside, that's the hole it's gonna go into. And you'll notice that it hangs over the edge right here. So you can kind of mark it with a pen and we need to cut that off because this is gonna be our motor retainer and the motor tube is gonna go right through here and you can see that weld nut interferes. So that's why we have to remove that little corner. You're gonna need a rotary cutoff like this one right here, or you can use a saw. This is pretty soft metal, so it should cut pretty easy. So I'm gonna put it in a vise. Just like that, so you can, hopefully you can see that. See my mark right there. That's where I'm going to cut off. So have your safety goggles ready. Let's see if I can do this. It's kind of backwards. So there's that. Again, test fit it into that ring. Oh nope, got to spin it around. <laughs> just so that it won't hang over that edge. Mine's a little bit close, so I'm gonna sand it. I've got some really aggressive sandpaper here. Or if you have a file, that might be even better. And just wanna make sure it doesn't hang over the edge. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we want to make sure when we glue, we're going to glue it in, make sure that it's uh, the weld nut comes in from the opposite side as the lettering on there. And I'm going to use some thick CA. Okay, I'm going to use some InstaSet. Okay, so that is step 87. Step 88 is to remove CR3 and 4 from the cardstock, which I've already done. Sand it as necessary. Step 89 is we're going to take the motor tube and we're going to remove this rectangle from the inside. And so cut those little tabs. Discard that piece. And then it also says to sand off those little tabs. Now we're gonna take CR3. This is step 90, and we're gonna glue it on the motor mount. Okay, so now every ring, I don't know if you can see this, has a little tick mark on the inside. So I'm gonna mark that so you can see a little bit better. I'm gonna mark both sides. That little align is going to line up with the line that's etched into the tube. Okay, so I'm going to do that to all my rings just so I know where they are. So there's one on CR4. CR5 has one. CR1 has one. CR2 has one right there. So those are important, so make note of those. Okay, so we're going to take CR3 and put it on here. And it's gonna go on this line here, right next to the cutout. And then that little tick mark that we just marked. Okay, so here's my line, here's my tick mark right there. So that's gonna be aligned like that. So that's where it's gonna get glued. Slide that into that like that. And then, you know, make sure that it's nice and perpendicular. Okay, just like that. So now, step 91, we're going to do CR4 the same way. So again, 
the lettering goes towards this long end of the tube. Slide it onto your tube. And again, find that little notch and that's gonna go right there on the tube. And if you do it right, this hole here on CR3 should align with CR4. There's also, if you wanna double check, there's this straw and this straw is gonna get glued in here. And so they have to align. Mine looks pretty good, so that's where it's gonna get glued. Okay, so now we're gonna install CR5 the same way as CR3 and 4. Again, the graving goes down. So this is gonna be the bottom of the rocket. Glue the ring into place just forward of the mark using wood glue. Okay, so I'm trying to find my little notch right there. It's going to be lined up with that. And again, that hole here should line up with that hole there. So step 93 is to carefully place the four millimeter straw. So that's our big long straw right here through those holes. Okay, so we're gonna put that through the holes. There's one hole, two, and three. So that's gonna get glued there like that. We're gonna use thin CA for this one. So we're just gonna touch that with there, touch that there, touch that there. So let me accelerate that, and then we're gonna cut it off. So this is the Instaset to accelerate it. Okay, be careful of that straw. Don't want to kink it. Okay, so I'm going to trim this up here so that it's mostly flush. Okay, and then we're going to do the same down here on this end. Okay. And I'm going to sand that. Do the same on this end. And I'm going to take a file and just sand the inside. I'm going to touch that with a little bit more glue. Same thing on this end. This tube right here is for our igniter. So the upper stage has to be ignited electronically. So our eBay and our electronics is going to be here. The motor is down here. So we're going to run the igniter through that hole so that it can go into the bottom of the motor and ignite that motor. Um, without this tube in here, it would be really hard to get the igniter from the down here to up here. So that's the purpose of that. Step 94, we're going to take CR2, which is this one right here. And we're also going to take our eBay sled, which is this one right here. Okay, see these notches here on this end? This is towards the front. This one is going to go into here like that. And then CR2... It's going to go like that. All right, so let's go ahead and glue that up. All right, just like that. And then make sure your centering ring is nice and perpendicular. So I am going to glue this on here as well. So I'll put glue on the tabs. This I'm going to let dry. Okay, so we're gonna go on to step 95. So in step 95, we're gonna take our Kevlar shock cord. This is the 750 pound. So this is the heavy one that we ignored earlier. We wanna cut 24 inches off of this. So here's 18, then do another six inches right there. And the easiest way to cut it is to fold it in half. Take your knife and just kind of saw through it like that. Okay, now hold on to this piece. Uh, we're gonna use this in just a second, but we're gonna take the big piece right now and we're gonna tie it to the front end of this tube. And you'll see that there's some notches right here. So that's where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna tie it first. Okay. 
All right, so I'm a little bit long, so I'm gonna kind of trim it. Okay. So when you do this, make sure that this long part is on this side and not on that side of the board. Okay, this ring right here is going to go on top of this, and you see that I need to push this up into those notches so that this ring will be flush up against the tube, and that's where it's going to be glued. And then finally, in step 97, we're going to glue this ring onto here, and this shock cord is going to go through that little notch. I'm going to start putting glue on everything. This is going to go on first, like that, right up against that, and smear that glue into that shock cord, which is totally fine. So now, in 97, we're going to take this ring, and it gets glued onto here, so I'm going to pass this end of the shock cord through there. It's going to get glued on there like that. Oop, and you can see my ring, is, or my uh, shock cord, is not through the notch. Need to rotate it around a little bit. There we go, just like that. You can see that shock cord is going to go over the top of that one and under this one, so that's the way we want it. All right, so I am going to push some glue everywhere. I'm just going to back it up just a little bit so I can just push it on straight. Gotta be careful of that green straw there. Okay, now step 98 is to put uh, glue fillets everywhere. So I'm just gonna spread my glue around and I wanna glue that shock cord down as well. So this is gonna take a lot of glue. Smash it in and I wanna get glue underneath along the tube. Glue that down. Put center, uh, glue around all my rings. So you get the idea. We're going to put glue everywhere. Uh, we want it nice and strong. It's a little messy, but you're not going to see this part. You're only going to see this top part. So if you want to have something that, that's nice looking, just make sure the top is nice. Okay, so my top is, looks nice. My bottom, don't really care about. Just make sure everything is nice and straight. And then we're going to let this dry. I'm going to use the back of my file here just to smash that glue down in that joint. Okay, it doesn't look pretty, but it'll be strong. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Um, there's so much glue over the, on this, I'm going to let it dry overnight so it's good and dry. We just finished step 98, and before I move on, I want to show you something important. We need to make sure that there's a good fillet between the board and the tube because there's an ejection charge that's going to go through this tube out the front end. And if there's any gaps here, because we made there, there's a cutout there, that ejection charge is going to come out the side and it's going to pressurize this area. And we've had this happen to us in the past. Um, it, it's going to blow out this bulkhead right here, and then it's going to come around and get towards your electronics. So make sure you have a good fillet on both sides of the tube where the sled meets the tube. This one looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and move on.